Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a different type of object. Let's look at an example. Suppose you head over to the bagel shop and you order 10 bagels, two plain bagels, five sesame bagels, and three poppy seed bagels. What type of combinatorial object is this collection of bagels? It's a collection of 10 bagels and the order of the bagels does not matter. It does not matter the order in which the bagels were placed in the bag, you're still taking home these 10 bagels. So this feels like a set. Order doesn't matter. At the same time, these 10 bagels are of three different types, and you're allowed to repeat the types of bagels. And if we look at two bagels of the same type, we would consider them to be identical. We can't tell the difference between two sesame bagels that are placed in front of us. So what is this type of object? It's like a set, but we're allowed to repeat objects. And so this is called a multiset. A precise definition would be a multiset is an unordered collection of objects where repetition is allowed. When you're describing a multiset, it's important to keep track of how many times each element occurs. This is called the multiplicity of the element. When we add together the multiplicities of all the elements, that is called the cardinality of the multiset. As an example, let's look at this multiset 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. That has elements of the form 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Notice that we're using these angle brackets so that visually we recognize that this is a multiset and not a set. In M, the element 1 has multiplicity 2. There's two copies of 1. Element 2 has multiplicity 1. The element 3 has multiplicity 1. The element 4 has multiplicity 0. There's no 4 in M. And the element 5 has multiplicity 1. If we add all these numbers together, we get the cardinality of M, which is 5. There's five elements in the multiset M. Another way to write a multiset is to use some superscripts to keep track of the multiplicities. On the previous page, we had 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. So we can write that as 1 superscript 2, 2 superscript 1, 3 superscript 1, and 5 superscript 1 to keep track of the multiplicities of each of those elements. If you had written down 1 superscript 2, 2 superscript 1, 3 superscript 1, 4 superscript 0, 5 superscript 1, that would also be acceptable. Writing down 4 to the 0 just lets us know that there aren't any 4s. We say two multisets are equal if they contain the same elements with the same multiplicities. For example, the multiset AAA comma B is not equal to the multiset ABBB. The first multiset has three copies of A and one copy of B, while the second multiset has one copy of A and three copies of B. On the other hand, ABBA is the same as BAAB because they both have two copies of A and two copies of B. So if our task is to enumerate multisets, this can be helpful. You can use the fact that multiplicities matter to help you list the multisets of a particular size on a list of elements. For example, let's say we needed to enumerate the multisets with cardinality 2 and that have elements in the set ABC. The set of such multisets are AA, AB, AC, BB, BC, and CC which have been partitioned into those that have two A's, those that have one A, and those that have zero A's. So there we've listed all the multisets of cardinality two. We might want to ask how many there are. The number of multisets of size K with elements from a set of size N has a special notation. It looks like a binomial coefficient with an extra pair of parentheses, and we read this as N multi choose K. For example, on the previous page, we had multisets of size two with elements from the set ABC, which has size three. And so that set is counted by three multi choose two, which was six different multisets. In the next video, we'll have sets that we count using multi choose expressions. And in the remainder of this video, we'll be talking about how to find a numerical value for n multi choose k. Our strategy to do that will be to create a one to one correspondence between a set of multisets and a different set of objects that are easy to count. So let's take a peek at those objects. Here's a new combinatorial object. We're looking at sequences of stars 
and bars. In particular, we want a fixed number of stars, A of them, and a fixed number of bars, B of them. For example, when A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 3, we have 4 stars and 3 bars, and we can arrange them like this. Star, star, bar, star, bar, star, bar. Or we could arrange them like this. Bar, star, star, bar, star, star, bar. Or like this. Star, bar, 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 star, star, star. I claim that we know how to count this. How many sequences are there with A stars and B bars? This is a counting question like we just did. We have 4 plus 3, or in general, A plus B positions, of which A of them have to be stars. In how many ways can we choose A positions out of A plus B to be stars? That's A plus B, choose A. We're saying that the number of sequences with A stars and B bars is A plus B, choose A. And so now what we're going to do is come up with a one-to-one -one correspondence between multi-sets of size K with elements from a set of size N and sequences of stars and bars with k stars and n minus 1 bars. To make this work, we're going to need to fix an ordering of the n elements in the set. A natural way to do that is to say if you have numbers, put them in increasing order, like 1, 2, 3, 4. If you have letters, put them in alphabetical order, a, b, c, d. If you have something else, just choose a particular ordering of them. And now we want to go in this direction. Let's say we have a multiset of size k with elements from a set of size n. We'll record the multiplicities of these elements in the multiset using stars and introduce bars as separators for each new type of element. Here's some examples. If we see 1, 1, 2, 4, we put a star for a 1, a star for a 1, and that's the end of the 1s. So we put a separator. And now we put a star for the 2s, and then we put a separator. There's no 3s, so we put another separator. And last, there's a 4, so we put one more star. Let's try that again. Consider 1, 3, 3, 3. We see we have a star for the 1, and then we mark the end of the 1s with a separator. There's no 2s, so we put another separator. We have 3 stars for the 3 3s in our multiset, and then we have a separator to end the threes, and there's no fours, so we don't put any more stars. If our multiset is one, two, three, four, we'd have a star and then a separator, a star and then a separator, a star and then a separator, and then a star. All in all, we always have four stars and three bars separating elements of type one, two, three, and four. We can see how to go backwards too. Let's say we have a sequence of stars and bars. We can determine the corresponding multiset by recording how many stars there are between each set of dividers. If we have star, star, bar, star, bar, bar, star, there must be two ones. One, two, no threes, and one, four, which would give us this multiset. One thing we have to be careful about is the distinction between n being the number of types of elements in the set and n minus 1 being the number of dividers separating the types. The reason that's the case is because if we have n bins of things, we only need n minus 1 dividers to separate the bins. How does this let us count multisets? We've just seen there's a correspondence between multisets of size k with elements from a set of size n and sequences of stars and bars with k stars and n minus 1 bars. So that tells us that the number of objects on the left hand side, which is n multi choose k, is equal to the number of objects on the right hand side, which is n minus 1 plus k choose k. As an example, we see that 3 multi choose 2 is equal to 4 choose 2, which is equal to 6. That's it for this video. See you shortly.